What we're going to be going over here is the ending inventory budget. We'll look at how we set up and how we calculate it. So starting out with our budget diagram here, we start out with our master budget. And then under our master budget, we have our operating budget and then our financial budget. So we'll follow this operating budget down. So under our operating budget, we'd have to set up our sales budget here. And then knowing our sales budget, we can determine our production budget and also selling an administrative budget. So uh, knowing our production budget, then we can determine our direct materials budget and direct labor and factory overhead budgets. And once knowing those budgets, we can determine our ending inventory budget. Okay, so this ending inventory budget then is going to go into the cost of goods sold for the unit sales we have. And then knowing our cost of goods sold budget, then we can determine our income statement budget. So let's go and let's look at how we calculate this ending inventory budget. Okay, so for our ending inventory budget, the first thing we have to do is determine the ending direct materials. And that equals our desired ending materials times the budgeted prices for each of the materials that we're looking at. So the desired ending inventory materials is going to come out of your direct materials and your production budgets here. So those you're going to have to know. And then the next thing you have to do is you have to determine your budgeted or standard unit cost. And that really equals the quantity of direct material required per unit times the budgeted prices. So that's the first thing you have to determine. Then the next thing you'd have to know is your direct labor hours here required per unit times the budgeted direct labor hour rate. And then you have to, uh, next thing you'd have to know here is your total uh, overhead rate here times your direct labor hours required on a per unit basis. So what you're going to do is you're going to be adding uh, your direct materials. Uh, you have to learn uh, on a per unit basis here, you have to know what your direct materials are what your direct labor is, and then your overhead that's included in the standard cost here for uh, your product here. And then knowing that here, knowing your budgeted uh, or standard unit cost, then you can determine your ending finished goods. So this is the last step here. And that really equals the desired ending finished goods. And that's going to come off the sales budget times the budgeted unit cost. And that's what we calculated up here, the budgeted or standard unit cost. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at how we'd make these calculations. Now for our calculations for our ending inventory budget. Remember, these are budgeted estimates here. So we're going to be looking just at a single product, but you'd have to go through all your products within the company here to determine your total ending inventory budget. And then again, we're going to be just looking at a specific month here for based on our sales budget here for calculating that in, ending inventory budget. But remember, you'd have to go through all the months in the year here to determine the total ending inventory budget for each month. So starting with our sales budget, Budget. This is where we're going to get our unit sales that we have forecasted here. So we're going to be looking at the month of March here and we're going to have unit sales projected here at 11,000 units here. And then for the month of April, we're going to also need those. Those are going to be projected here at 12,000 unit sales. Again, off our sales budget. Now the next thing we have to know is our desired ending inventories. And they're going to be based on some percentages here, but you'd have to determine how you'd set up those, determine how much you would want in your ending inventories. And for our direct materials here, we're going to look at 10% of the next period's materials needs. And those are really going to be based off uh, the projected sales budget that we're going to be looking at for the next period in this case. And then also for our uh, finished goods here, we're going to project those at 5% here of the next period's uh, sales for for finished goods would really be based off our sales budget. So really what we're doing here is we're looking at our desired ending inventory. It's usually based on the next period's sales budget. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. 10% here for our direct materials and 5% for our finished goods. Okay, so the next thing we need are our inputs uh, for our direct materials here. And we'll start with our inputs here. So for our direct materials, all we're saying on a per unit basis here, and we're going to just be looking at this one product, and we'll just say there's two parts here per unit for the product here. So, But you'd have many, many parts going through for a particular product, and you'd have to determine your direct materials for each of those here, and direct labor and overhead and so forth. But let's just go on a two per basis here. So we're going to have two parts per unit here, and the cost here is going to be $10 here for uh, 
uh, one part. So the total with uh, two parts, your total cost output here in direct materials is going to be $20. And then for a direct labor here on a per unit basis, we're just saying it's four tenths of an hour here. And our cost on an hourly basis here, direct labor is $15 per hour. So four tenths of an hour here times $15 is going to give us um, up on a per unit basis here direct labor cost of six dollars and then for our factory overhead again it's going to be based on direct labor hours here so for our variable uh, factory overhead we just take four tenths of an hour here for the total unit hours times our cost here is going to be for variable overhead thirty dollars per hour per direct labor hour so four tenths times thirty dollars gives us on a per unit basis here twelve dollars that's going to go into a variable factory overhead and then for our fixed uh, factory overhead again it's based on uh, uh, direct labor hours here at four tenths uh, per four tenths of an hour per unit times in this case it's fifty dollars per hour here for a fixed overhead uh, rate so four tenths times that is going to give us twenty dollars here on a per unit basis for our fixed uh, factory overhead. So what you want to do, and this is really what we're going to be doing down below here, you just want to total up your direct material costs, your direct labor costs, and all your factory overhead costs, and this is going to give you your cost on a per unit basis. You'd have to do that. So uh, if adding those up, our unit or our standard cost that we'd have is $50, $58 per unit. Okay, so now let's go down here and we uh, calculate our ending inventory budget remember that's just for one month here the month of march one period here so we start out with our ending direct materials what do we need there and uh, what you do here for ending direct materials you just take your desired ending materials quantity that you need here times each of their prices here okay so what we're going to do in this case we're ending materials remember we wanted that as 10 percent here of our sales budget for the period that we're looking at and that was the next uh, sales uh, sales budget for the next period here times the quantity total quantity of parts that we're looking at here on a, on a per unit basis and in this case uh, we have 24,200 parts that we're going to have to buy and there and at their price it's going to be ten dollars each here so 10 percent of 24,200 parts times ten dollars each gives us a ending direct materials budget cost here, $24,200. So let's go and let's calculate how we calculated the $24,200 here in the quantity of parts that we needed. Okay, so again, we could have looked at that and direct, you could go to your direct materials budget, but we'll be going off our production budget. We can get those numbers off our production budget. Okay, so moving over to our production budget. Again, this is for the next period here, the April period. We're it, and that's what we're basing on our, our our needs here based on the next period. We're calculating for the March period here, but based on our next needs, we can determine, this is what we want to determine our ending, uh, ending direct material on. Okay, so we start out with our sales projected for uh, April here at 12,000 units here. And then we add to it the desired ending finished goods. Again, we want 5% of the next period's budget here. In this case, it's actually the March period or the May period we're looking at. And those are 15, uh, 14,000 units. Remember that's, we just stepped up one period here. We went from 4-1 to 5-1. I should have noted that here. Five, uh, 14,000 units for the next period, the May period here times 5% is going to give you 700 units. And then from that, we'd have to subtract out our beginning finish goods inventory and then again we'll just take five percent of the current or the projected sales here for the uh, the april period or the april period here times of, of twelve thousand times five percent is going to give us 600 units so we have to subtract at our beginning finished goods here of 600 units from our totals up above and the units that we're going to have to produce here for uh the next or our april period here is twelve thousand 100 units and then based on those units here we can you just take it times the number of parts required per unit so we have the 12,100 units remember we only needed two pieces here per unit so that total gives us two times 12,100 gives us 24,200 the quantity the quantity of parts we're going to be needing here but you can see here on this production budget it's a little different from our sales budget because our sales budget we looked at 12,000 units here but with our production budget uh, we're sitting at 12,100 because we had to consider desired ending finished goods and our 
bless our beginning finished goods. So that uh, results in a different uh, quant units that we have to produce based on our sales forecast. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at what we've done here. So again, just going through our ending direct materials, we've taken 10%. Uh, that's what we want, 10% here of our sales, our next period sales quantity times those total parts that we calculated, 24,200 parts, again, times $10 each, gives us that $24,200 here. Dollars. That's, the, it, that's what our value here of our ending direct materials that we budgeted. So the next thing we have to do is just uh, calculate our budgeted or standard unit cost. And we did that up above here, but just to go through it again, we would start out with our quantity of direct materials per unit here times the budgeted price for each of those materials. So we have two, two, a quantity of two here that we need for per our unit of sales. That was two, one part, two, two parts here. And each of those are at $10 each. So that gives us that $20 here in our direct materials we need. And then we add to it the direct labor hours per unit times our labor rate. In this case, per unit for our labor hours is four tenths of an hour here times our labor rate here is $15 per hour for, that's gonna give us $6 here in direct labor cost. And then our total overhead rate times, in this case, we're using the direct labor hours as our basis here for overhead rate. So our variable overhead was at $30 per hour here, plus our fixed overhead here at $50 per hour. Total those together and you take it times our, uh, based on our unit, our direct labor here on a unit basis is four tenths of an hour. So that gives us $32 here. So totaling up our direct materials here at $20, our direct labor here at $6 and our overhead here at $32 gives us a total budgeted standard unit cost here of $58. And we calculated that up above as well. So our ending finished goods, all we do is take our desired ending finished goods here and we're gonna look at how we calculate that times the unit cost. So for our desired ending finished goods, again, we want 5% here of the next uh, next period's uh, budget here, and that's the 4-1 sales budget here. Remember, we're working for, with the 3-1 date here, but we have to calculate it, finished goods based on the next period here. That was the April date. Okay, so using our April date here is the number of units based on our sales forecast, 12,000 times 5% for our desired ending finished goods times the cost on a per unit basis. So remember, we calculated our cost on a per unit basis here at $58. So multiplying everything out here, 5% of 12,000 units times $58 per unit gives us a ending finished goods uh, budget here, $34,800. $800. So two things we had to do, or three things we had to do here. We had to determine our desired ending inventory budget here uh, based on our quantities that we need, 24,200. Then we had to determine our unit cost here, $58 per unit. And then based on our sales that we projected sales for the next period here times the amount of inventory that we want to carry here 5% gives uh, times the unit cost gives us $34,800 in our ending finished goods inventory. Okay, so that's our calculations here. Okay, so let's just go back over here and just to summarize what we've done here. Uh, go through it again here. Our ending inventory budget, you just take your ending direct materials here. Those are desired ending materials coming off your either your direct materials budget or your production budget times the budgeted price for each of the materials you're looking at. And then next thing you have to do is just determine your budgeted or standard unit cost. We went through that here. The quantity of direct material required on a per unit basis times the budgeted prices. Add two at the direct labor hours required on a pure unit basis times the budgeted direct labor rate. And then adding to that, you just, well, budget, excuse me, everything had to be multiplied here. If I didn't say quantity of direct material required on a pure unit basis times the budgeted prices. And then your direct labor hours required here on a pure unit basis times the budgeted direct labor rate. And then you just take your total overhead rate here. Uh, it, your total overhead rate here, whatever that adds up for your variable and direct, you take it times your direct labor hours required on a per unit basis. And then using your budgeted standard cost here, you can determine your ending finished goods. Just take your desired ending finished goods that you needed here from your sales budget times your budgeted unit cost that we calculated up here. Okay, so that's how you'd go calculating your ending inventory budget.